Hi and welcome. My name is Lawrence Baker and this video is going to be about creating a sunburst or starburst or sun flare brush from scratch. Let's get going. Make sure that you're working on the same hymn sheet as me. Workspace, graphic and web and always reset it to make sure it looks like that. Now I like to have all my panels as icons and I like to use keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to come to this double headed arrow and collapse to icons. Now we need a new document. Command and control, command on a Mac, control on a Windows system, N for new document. I'm going to use web large, but I'm going to make the artboard background transparent. It doesn't matter what document size you use, but it will uh, dictate the size of the brush. So just go create on that, and we've got our document there. F7 to bring out the layers panel. D for default colors, so that's black in the foreground, white in the background, and then go Alt on a Windows system, Option on a Mac, Backspace to fill with black. We need a new blank layer. Layer, new, Layer, Shift, Command or Control, N. Command on a Mac, Control on a Windows system. So I could do that now or come down here and click on that icon there. I like my keyboard shortcuts. Shift, Command or Control, N. So I'm going to call this Brush and go OK. Now I need to paint with white. So that's X on your keyboard to swap the foreground and background colors around. So it's white in the foreground. Now, B for brush, which is up there. I'm already on it, so make sure you're on the brush, not on the pencil tool. So B for brush. F5 to bring out the brush settings and brushes together. But F5 is one of the most important keyboard shortcuts, along with F7 when you're working like this. F7 for layers, F5 for the brushes. And brush settings and brushes are normally docked together. I need to pick a brush, so come to brushes. Now I happen to have picked Kyle Bonus Chunky Charcoal. If you haven't downloaded Kyle Webster's brushes, and they are fantastic, go to the panel menu of the brushes panel, go to get more brushes, it will load your web browser, find the brush pack you want, let's say it's the Mega Pack, that's what I've downloaded, or Spatter or whatever, but I recommend getting the Mega Pack. Download it to your downloads folder or whatever. Come back to Photoshop, back to the brushes panel. Let's get rid of that layers panel, second F7. Panel menu, import brushes, find your .abr brush and load it in like so. So click on it, go open, and you'll have those brushes to use. Any textured brush will do. It's just happened I happened to pick Kyle Bonus Chunky Charcoal. I'm going to do a quick trial run like that and say, well, that looks okay. If I wanted to change it slightly, I could bring the spacing up and maybe change the roundness. I might make it 40 round so it's a bit thinner and just bring it up slightly like so. Maybe bring the spacing down. I'm just looking for something that roughly looks like that. That will absolutely do. Now, if you've been playing around like this, F7. Command and Control A to make sure I'm selecting the right layer. So I selected all the layer, then all I have to do is backspace. So if you're experimenting like that, I always remember that sort of trick. Command and Control A, and then backspace to clear the layer. So Command and Control D will deselect because I don't need to do that anymore. Shift key kept pressed to constrain it to a straight line. So I'm just going to paint across roughly like that. So I'm not taking up everything, just that middle section there. What I like to do is come to the Move tool and center it horizontally and vertically. So when I'm creating the brushes, I like to do it this way. So what I'm going to do now is run a motion blur on it. So filter, blur, motion blur, angle of zero. You can see what's going to happen. And I'm sort of roughly going to go for maybe 500 pixels. If it looks similar to this, whatever pixels works, because I've pick this particular size of document. So it depends on the document size you picked. So roughly looking like that, it's absolutely fine. I might drop it down a slight bit like that. So 400 pixels I'm using thereabouts. Then I'm going to duplicate this layer. And the best way is a keyboard shortcut and that's Command or Control J to duplicate the layer. Then I'm going to use Free Transform, which is Edit, 
free transform, command or control T. So command or control T, and I'm going to press the Alt or Option key, Alt on Windows, Option on a Mac, and drag it out from the center. So pressing that key ensures it sort of drags out and keeps it from the center outwards. So roughly go quite near to the edges. Now I'm going to bring the sort of height down. There's two ways I can do this. I can drag down again, pressing the Alt or Option key, drag down like so, but it's a little bit fiddly. Or you could come up here, make sure it's unlinked and change the height there yourself. But that looks pretty okay. I'm going to spread it out a little bit more with the Alt or Option key kept pressed to around there. Press return or just hit the tick symbol. So what I'm going to do now is put a bevel and emboss on this, and that's a layer style. So I might make this a bit large and fill the screen, actually, and get rid of the layers panel, F7, and the brush panel here by going F5 as well. I'm going to put a bevel and emboss on this, and that's a layer style, as I said. So I do need the layers panel, F7. Double click on any blank area to bring up the layer style dialog box. Pick bevel and emboss and make sure the whole thing's highlighted. And you can see it's already set up, but basically use emboss, smooth, and the depth is about shading. Now just look in that box there, that will give you better feedback. And around there, it's quite punchy because this will make the brush look less flat. Uh, and you'll see what I mean when we come to the end. So I've got 542% there. That just happens to work for me around there. There's a point where it doesn't you know, make any impact. So around, 600 that'll do now the size obviously i'm looking at the size 95 pixels you know that works for me as long as it looks roughly like that it's absolutely fine soften no angle and altitude work like this if you've got a spotlight on the sidewalk or pavement at ground level shining at the bottom of a billboard and then you move the spotlight from left to right or right to left that is the angle but the altitude is the height, basically. So at zero degrees, it's pointing at the bottom of the billboard. At 90, it's pointing into the sky. So 90 altitude will never work. But for this, I'm going to pick 170, roughly, tab down, and roughly around 20. So it's one-fifth of the way up the billboard. That's the way to look at it. Gloss contour, linear is fine. anti list I like to tick it because it stops the jaggy. So it's entirely up to you. You won't notice much difference, so you can keep it ticked. Now, highlight mode would normally be on screen and white, but I've changed it to hard light and I've kept the color white, but I put the opacity up to 100%. Shadow mode would normally be on multiply and black. I've chosen hard light and I've clicked here and used a very light gray. Now, HSB, hue, saturation, and brightness, I've chosen 70% of the brightness, that's 70% gray. So that's what I've gone for. Hard light and 75% opacity. I'm gonna have all this on my website, all these instructions and the brush to download. Do visit my website, all will be there. So I'm gonna go okay on that. What I'm gonna do now is create a new layer. I'm gonna drag that down a bit, actually. So that's shift, Command and Control N, and I'm going to call this Center and go OK. M for the rectangular marquee tool. In the middle of the document, Alt and Shift key kept pressed together, drag out. So it roughly fills up to the edge of the document around there. I've gone too far there. That's my fault. Command Zero back down. So Command Z to go away from that. Sorry, I touched the wrong key there. So Alt, Shift, press together, drag out roughly close to the edges. Let go of the mouse first, then let go of the modifier keys, like so. We need to fill this with gray. That Shift, backspace, 50% gray, mode normal, opacity 100%, go OK. Now we need to render this as fibers. So that's Filter, Render, Fibers. And I've got a variance of about 19 and a strength of 12. I think that will work. Around 16 and 10 will be absolutely fine. As long as it looks roughly like that, that would be fine. I'm going to lose the selection now, and that's Command and Control D, but I'm going to lock the transparency of the layer. So clicking that checkerboard will lock it, the transparency. So I'm not going to work on 
any transparent areas, only this sort of opaque area here. So let's put those back on by dragging down. I'm going to run filter, blur, motion blur again. And put it on 90, I'm going to look, trying to make it look quite blurry. For me, it will be different for you. I've gone with 625 pixels. That looks pretty much okay. Now I'm going to use a gradient tool. That's G on your keyboard. That's the gradient tool there. Come up here, click on that. Basics, foreground to transparent and go okay. Make sure you're on default colors, which is D on the keyboard for black in the foreground. So you've got foreground to transparent and you want linear. So if you mouse over, you'll see linear there, linear gradient. Mode is overlay, opacity 100%, reverse is unticked, dither and transparency. Dragging from the bottom with the shift key pressed, the shift key will ensure it moves in a straight line. Go nearly to the top and let go. And then do a few more, shift key kept pressed here and there, just to make it look a little bit less obvious. So what we need to do now is load this layer up as a selection. Command or control key kept pressed, come to the thumbnail and you'll see the hand and the marching ants symbol. Click on it to load it up as a selection. Then we're going to go to filter, distort, polar coordinates. You can see your starburst effect, rectangular to polar, go okay. Command or control D to lose the selection. You can see the black edges, all we have to do is this, change the blend mode to screen and it gets rid of those black edges. We're going to use the gradient tool again on a blank layer. Shift, command or control N and call this glow. Okay. Gradient tool, we're already on it. Swap the colors around, so white is in the foreground, X on your keyboard. Still foreground to transparent, change it to radial, so we're coming out from the center, overlay and everything else, leave as it is. Shift key kept press, come about to sort of midway and let go, you can see you've got your glow. Now we're gonna transform it so it doesn't look too obvious, I'm gonna make it sort of less round. Free transform, Command or Control T, or Edit, Free Transform, Command or Control T going now. Alter Option key kept pressed so it sort of stays from the center. So drag it in like that so it's more oblong and I might make it slightly larger as well while I'm there. Press Return. Now we're going to use another layer style called Outer Glow. So double click on a blank part of this layer, click on Outer Glow, and make sure it's ticked and highlighted. I've gone for 77% opacity. It's entirely up to you. I, I, I might even go a little bit higher. Softer, spread, no, because it does that. Size, well, basically after a certain point, it won't basically make much difference. So I've gone for a 170, thereabouts, 166, that'll do. Range, jitter, everything else, leave as it is, that's absolutely fine. Now to make a brush, We've got to have everything on one layer. We've got four or five layers here. So there's something called the stamp. The way I like to explain it is like this. It takes all the layers and puts them on one layer. And people call it the claw or the stamp because it uses a lot of your fingers. It's not in the menu at all. But the way I do it is the way it works for me is Command and Control, Alter Option, Shift, and then press E. That's probably not the official right way round. So for most people on most keyboards, it will be Command and Control, Alter Option, Shift E, and I've created that stamp layer there. So if I take all the other layers away, like so, you can see we just got that one layer there. Now brushes work like this. Where it's darkest, it will have the most effect. So this needs inverting, and that is Command or Control I. So we inverted the brush. Now I could trim away some of the pixels I don't need, but it doesn't make any difference. Basically, that's our brush ready to be created. So edit, define brush preset, call it sunburst final or something like that, whatever you want to name it. And the minute you do that, it will be available to you as a brush. Now you can see the crosshair now because that means I've either got the caps lock on or the brush is too big for the view. So command minus to make the space bigger. You can see the brush appearing there. I'm not gonna use it on this document, obviously. I've got an image here 
ready. And you can see the crosshair. That means it's too big for the view if you haven't got your caps lock on. So command or control minus, you can see the brushes appeared. So I'm just going to bring it back to the middle here. And we're on white. Everything's up there normal, 100% opacity and flow, etc. So you just stamp down once. So off we go. There you are. That's a sunburst brush. And as I said, I'm going to have it all on my website. So that's it, guys. That's the brush. Hope you got something from this. Thank you very much.